Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the ATI T Study Manual, the sixth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 148. And we are on page number 92. A simple concept for the last couple of days. Day 147, day 146, we've been talking about simple elementary, rudimentary concepts of geometry that you find on page 92 and 93. And today we'll discuss how to go about measuring area of a circle. Let's take a look at it. So if you're given a circle, if you're given a circle and we are asked to find how much area does, it, does this circle have, what we need to know about this circle is what is the distance from across, what is the distance across, across the center. The word across the center means the distance has to go through the center. Not, not something like this. this. This is not distance across the center. But this, this is not a distance across the circle because it doesn't go through the center. Distance across the circle is what we call diameter. Distance across a circle is what we call a diameter. And if we know the diameter, we can figure out the area of the circle. Because area of the circle is equal to, A stands for the area of the circle, equals to pi r squared. Pi is a constant. We talked about it before in the last two videos. It's, it's a natural constant. It has a value of 3.14. R here is your radius. So if you're given a diameter, we can figure out the radius. Or if, it's, if you're given the radius, even better. So if you know the diameter, then radius is simply half of the diameter because radius is, is the distance from the center of the circle to the outermost edge. So if you tell me what is the distance from A to B, I can divide that by 2, take a half of that, and I will know the distance from the center to the outermost edge. Pi r squared. For example, for example, we are told that the radius of a circle is 3 meters. And the question is, what is its area? What is its area. Let's find out, shall we? So area is going to be pi times r squared. r we know is 3 meters. 3 meters. Don't forget to put the unit in there. Don't just put 3. 3 meters squared. That's how it is. Well, let's take a... We're going to digress here for a second. Let's do it here so you understand what's going on. For example, if someone says 7 squared, what does 7 squared mean? 7 squared means 7 times 7. Of course, that's 49. 10 squared means 10 times 10. But it's 100. 3 squared means 3 times 3. That's a 9. Which is fine. These are all numerical values. We have no units. But instead of 7 squared, instead of 7 squared, watch what happens. Instead of 7 squared, if we had 7 meter squared, which is what we have here, then this would boil down to 7 meters times 7 meters, just like 7 times 7. But 7 times 7 we know is 49, just, just like we just did here. But then we have to do meters times meters. We mustn't forget the units. Meters times meter is meter squared. Meter squared. So here we have pi times 3 meters, if you like, times 3 meters. I'm going to erase all of that here. 3 times 3 is 9. So we have pi times 9 and then meters times meters is going to be meters squared. You could leave it like this. There is nothing wrong with it. But the convention dictates that we write that as numerical value goes first, then the constant, and then the unit. 9 pi meters squared. 9 pi meters squared. 9 times pi, you can just leave it like that, or you can say that it is approximately 27 meters squared. Why 27? Because we are, we are saying that, we are saying that 
pi is approximately 3. Pi is approximately 3. So 9 times 3 is 27 square meters. Or if you want to be a little bit more precise, you can say that this is approximately 9 times 3.14, whatever that happens to be, meters squared. 9 times 3.14, whatever that happens to be, meters squared. Do you understand? Why meters squared? Why is this unit squared at the end? Just put it in a different color so we can we can make it more salient. Why is that unit at the end being squared? Meter squared. Why is the unit squared? See right here? This is what we're talking about here. Why is the unit squared? Because area is a two-dimensional concept. Area is a two-dimensional concept. For example, for example, we need the room, so I need to erase this thing. For example, if we're given if we're given a rectangle, if we're given a rectangle, and we are told that this is three meters and this is seven meters, the area of this rectangle is going to be length times the width, which is seven meters times three meters. So seven times three is twenty-one. Twenty-one what? It has to have a unit. Meters times meters, meters times meters, this is square. You see area, the unit is square. Why is the unit squared? Because area is a two-dimensional concept. It has two dimensions, length and width. It has two dimension, length and width. Similarly, when we talk about the area of a circle, that's a two-dimensional concept. Area means how much space does it occupy if I were to put it on some, some surface, if I were to put it on a table or if I were to hang it on a wall, how many square inches is it going to cover on a wall, how many square feet is this spending going to cover on a wall, well, that's a two-dimension concept. Do you understand? We can. So therefore, therefore, area is always going to be unit squared. Area is always going to be. Area is always going to be unit squared. Whatever the unit happens to be. Whatever the unit happens to be. If you're measuring things in terms of meter, like we are here, then it would be meter squared. If you're measuring things in terms of yard. It would be yard squared, for example, instead of meters here, instead of meters if we had yard, 3 yard by 7 yard, it would have been 21 yards squared. If you're measuring things in inches, it would have been inches squared. If you're measuring things in miles, it would have been miles squared. If you're talking about area of your town, my town uh, is, a, is my shape of my town is approximately a rectangle, it's an approximately rectangle looking town. And from this end of the town to that end of the town is 3 miles. And from this end of the town to that end of the town is seven miles. What's the area of my town? It's 21 squared miles. 21 squared miles. If you're measuring in terms of feet, it would be feet squared. If you're measuring in terms of centimeter, it would be centimeters squared. If you're measuring in terms of kilometers, it would be kilometers squared. Whatever, it, whatever the unit happens to be that you're using for length, whether it is inches, feet, yards, centimeter, meter, kilometer, whatever it happens to be, you're going to have to square the unit at the end because the unit is being multiplied by cell, meter times meter, meter square, inch times inch, inch squared, and so on and so forth. Let's do one more problem, dealing with the area of the circle. Enough of this talk. Let's do one more problem. Here's what we are told. We are told that the distance, distance across a circle is 10 feet. Question is, what is its area? What is the area of this particular circle if we are told? that the distance across it is 10 feet. Now I'm, I meant to make I meant to make only this word capital, not this word. 
because the emphasis is on this concept across. So let's draw a circle. Let's draw a circle. Right here we have a circle here. I'm going to redraw it. Let's draw a circle. And we are told that the distance across, whenever we see across, we have to go through the center. We must go through the center. So distance across from here, going across to here, or from here, going across to there, or from there, going across to here. It doesn't matter where you start, where you end, as long as you go from one edge to the other edge, going through the center. We must go through the centers. These are called diameters. And we are told that the distance across this particular circle is 10 feet. In other words, we are told that the diameter of the circle is 10 feet. We are told that. But if the diameter is 10 feet, we know what the radius is. And why do we need to know the radius? Well, because they are asking for the area of the circle. And the area of the circle we know, area of the circle we know is equal to pi r squared. We need to know the radius. But the diameter is 10 feet, radius is 5 feet. Half of it. Half of it. Because if you take any of, any of, these, any of these diameters, for example, if I were to take this diameter right here, the radius would be distance from the center to the outermost edge. That's your radius right there. Half the diameter. So that's 5 feet. We're almost done. So we plug that in here. So we have pi times our radius, which is 5 feet. Don't forget, don't forget to put the unit in there. Don't forget to put the unit in there. 5 feet. The radius is 5 feet. And now square the whole thing. Which is same as which is same as pi times 5 feet times 5 feet which gives us pi times 5 times 5 is 25 and then feet times feet you see the feet the units are going to be squared feet times feet is going to be feet squared we can't leave it like this convention dictates tradition dictates uh, that we write 25 first, the numerical value go first, then the constant, and then the unit. 25 pi squared, 25 pi, sorry, 25 pi square feet, 25 pi square feet, 25 pi square feet. You can leave it like this, or you can say it's approximately 75 square feet. Where, why 75? Because we are approximating pi is 3. We are saying the value of pi is about 3. Or if you want to be a little bit more precise, you can say it's 25 times 3.14 square feet. That's it. That's your answer. 25 times 3.14. Whatever that happens to be. And if you want to find out what that is, we can do it here. This is something I did in a, in a couple of videos before. So I'm going to redo it. Just follow me. 3.14 times 25, forget the decimal right now, for the time being, forget the decimal, we're going to worry about the decimal at the very end, you can stick it at the very end, just now we're going to deal with 314 times 25, see, okay, here we go, this is going to be a little bit different than what we're used to doing, so pay attention, 25 times 4, 25 times 4, 25 fours are 100, 0, carry 10, you see 100 is made up of 0, carry 10, and then 25 times 1 is 25 plus 10 is 35, 5, carry 3. 25 times 3 is 75, plus 3 is 78. And now we can go and take care of our decimal. Decimal was here, two decimal places. So we, our decimal point is right now sitting here. We pick it up, move it two decimal places, 1, 2. The answer is 78.5. Or if you don't like the way I multiplied it, we multiply by 25 in one shot instead of doing one digit at a time. If you want to do it one digit at a time, you'll see the answer is not going to change. 314 times 25. Let's do one digit at a time if you like. 5 fours are 20, 0, carry 2. 5 ones are 5 plus 2 is 7. 3 fives are 15. 3 fives are 15. 3 fives are 15. This is how we say it. 3 fives are 15. 3, 5 is a 15, or you can say 5, 3 is a 15, same thing. 5, 3 is are 15. When you say 3, 5 is a 15, we're counting by how many 5s? We have 3, 5s. When you count, when you say 3, 5, 3 is, we're counting by 3s. 5, 3s. Of course, 5 times 3 is 7, is 3 times 5. 3 times 5 is a 15, and 5 times 3 is a 15. Either way, you can say it, it doesn't matter. 
So I go back and forth so I don't want you to get confused. Sometimes I would say three times five, three, three fives and sometimes I would say five threes. Same thing. Back to where we were. So five fours. You see five fours are 20, zero, carry two. Five ones are five plus two is seven. Five threes are 15. We're done with that thing. Let's go to 10 digit. Hold the unit digit. Two fours are eight. Two threes are six. Did I miss something? Two fours are eight, I missed that one. Two fours are eight, two ones are two. And then finally, two threes are six. Watch. Let's see what happens. Zero comes down. Seven plus five is 15. Five, carry one. One plus five is six, plus two is eight. And six plus one is seven. And then we put our decimal point right here. Two places. So we pick our decimal point from here, it's sitting right here. Move it two places, one and two. 78.5, 78 same as before, 78.5. But if you don't want to go through all this trouble, if you don't want to go through this all this trouble in the exam, because in the exam, the answer choice is a multiple choice exam. It's a multiple choice exam. In a multiple choice exam, the exam giver is not asking you what the answer is. They're asking you, can you spot what the answer is among the four that I'm presenting to you? which is very different. You don't have to do the exact calculation. You just have to realize that whatever it is, the correct answer, whatever it is, slightly more than 75. This is how we write, slightly more than 75, put down 75, or put a plus sign on it. Why slightly more than 75? Because we are, we are pretending that pi is three. We know pi is not three. Pi is 3.1416 goes on and on forever. Pi is something more than three. So if you're gonna approximate pi as three, three times 25, 25 times three is 75, but it's gonna be something more than 75. There is only going to be one answer choice in the exam, that's going to be slightly more than 75 and that's your answer, which is going to be 78.5. You don't have to go through all this trouble to actually do it out. Do you understand? One last thing I want to cover before I end the video. Listen very carefully, okay? When we are measuring areas, when we are measuring areas, doesn't matter what the shape of the thing is, as long as it's in areas, when we are measuring areas, the units must always be squared. We already talked about it. Unit must always be squared. Meter squared, inches squared, yard squared, kilometers squared, kilometers squared, miles squared, miles squared, what do we do, inches, well, feet squared, and so on and so forth. Now here's the tricky part. Okay. Let's talk about this thing here. Meter squared. That's how it should be read. It should, it should be read as, as I have been reading, it should be read as meter squared. That's how it should be read, meter squared, just like just like this part you would read here. You will read this part as seven squared. What is being squared? It is the seven that is being squared. Seven squared, meter squared. This thing should be read as, it should be read as meter squared. These units must be read as meter squared, inches squared, yard squared, kilometer squared, mile squared, feet squared. But, but, Custom dictates, custom dictates, convention dictates, convention dictates, tradition dictates that we read it as meter squared and sometimes people are so lazy or maybe they don't know any better they simply read this, they simply read this thing they simply read this thing as meter squared they don't even say the d part they say meter squared they don't even say the d that's just a meter square it should be meter squared but even then even then to read this thing as this is wrong meter squared that's wrong that's not how it should be read for example here here we don't say 
Oh, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm losing my mind. It should be read as meter squared, but the custom dictates, but the custom dictates that we read this as square meters. That's how we usually say square meters. Think about it for a second. If I ask you, oh, what's the area of that bedroom? You say 100 square meters. You will not say 100 meters squared. Very few people will say 100 meters squared. If you said it the correct way, it will sound weird. It will sound geeky. It will sound very uh, abnormal. Layperson, ordinary people, simply say, what's the area of that uh, bedroom? 100 square meters. What's the area of your house? I don't know, maybe 1600 square feet. You see, 1600 square feet, square meters, square yard. But it is wrong. To read it like this is wrong. To read it like this is wrong. It should be read as meter squared, just like here, seven squared. You would not say squares, meters. For example, here you would not say, you would not read this as square seven. Nobody in the right mind is going to read this as square seven. Then why do we read this as square meters? That's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. That's just the convention. That's just how people have been reading it, even though it's the wrong way of saying it. It's the convention. It's a tradition. It's a norm. It's a custom. And customs and traditions and norms have no good reason. We do it because that's the way it's always been done. That's the rationale behind it. That is the whole, that is the sum total of the rationale behind anything that we do, which we describe as tradition. Why do we do it like this? I don't know. That's just what we always have done. Even though the bloody thing may be wrong, we did it because my forefathers did it like that. So it's people, ordinary people who read this as square meters. What's the area of your house? I don't know, 2,000 square feet? You would not say 2,000 feet squared. Notice next time, most people would not say it like this. Even though they should say unit squared, feet squared, meter squared, inches squared, miles squared, kilometers squared. But they would say square kilometers, square miles. Do you understand? What's the area of that forest? I don't know, maybe 30,000 square miles? They would not say 30,000 miles squared. Do you understand? So keep that in mind. This is how we read it. This is how a mathematician will insist that you read it because this is the correct mathematical way. This is the correct mathematical meter squared. It should be read as meter squared. Your math teacher, or mathematician will insist that you read it like this, the proper way. The layperson in our ordinary ordinary life, in our day-to-day -day life, we read it like this, square meters. Well, on that note, we'll say amen to that, all that, and we will meet again in the next video. Okay, bye now.